Captain C has finally arrived. Originally planned as the very first update, but quickly scrapped since the player base wanted actual content first. This took Rare about 4 years to do, but now it's finally time to own a ship that fits our personality. But is being a captain all that we wanted, or did this update need some more time at the ship ride? Let's find out. And just like always, don't forget to subscribe. My local grog dealer is out of supplies and the only joy I have left is seeing that subscribe number go up. So please do, it's, it's really appreciated. So the biggest addition Season 7 brings is obviously Captain C. This basically means we can own our own ship, name it, decorate it, have our cosmetics saved between sessions and unlock new rewards thanks to a new progression system. So how does it all work? Well, when starting a new session, you now have the option to buy and name a new ship or select a vessel you already own. You can name your ship basically anything as long as it's, you know, nice enough and doesn't include words like drunken or liquor, which for some reason isn't allowed, not even in my own native language, which kinda sucks to be honest. Eventually, you will be able to buy more ships of the same type when your ship becomes legendary. When first setting sail with your new vessel, the Pirate Lord will make an appearance and give you a little tutorial about being a Pirate Captain. This is a nice addition and adds to that typical rare flavor. Strangely, he refers to us as Pirate Legends, which I am, but it does make me wonder if Captain C was originally planned to be a Legend exclusive, which I would approve of. Whenever you are sailing, other players will be able to see your ship's name and the name of its captain whenever they use their spyglass. And this is probably the best addition. How awesome would it be to recognize a ship you have seen before or come across a ship of a famous YouTuber like Fuzzy Bond or Captain Blubber? Captain Blubber? I haven't heard of him. The only real downside to naming your ship is that you are limited to one font type. I do hope we get some more options in the future, like that crazy death metal font we see in the Black Witch, but I also wouldn't be surprised if this is all we get. So let's talk about the new progression system. These consist of various milestones that are tied to your personal and ship's progression. Completing these will unlock certain cosmetics and trinkets that you can buy at the ship ride to display on your ship. Certain milestones are bundled in specific categories that represent a different path you can take. This way your trinkets will reflect the adventures your ship chooses to participate in. Milestones come in both pirate milestones and ship milestones. You will always be working towards your pirate milestones, but you can only work on the other if you are sailing your own ship. The other difference between these is that they unlock different cosmetics. So you do need to progress in both if you want to unlock everything. The milestones themselves are general enough that you don't really need to go out of your way to progress through them, and I appreciate that. Sure, some of them require you to do tall tales again, which not everyone will enjoy, but I just see this as an opportunity to experience some of the older stories with a new perspective. And if you are like me, I will do my best to complete all of them. And with completing them, I mean unlocking all the trinkets attached to them, since these milestones are actually uncapped. I do want to mention that this Shrouded Ghost trinket is actually attached to accommodation and not a milestone, and I'm really happy they did this. Not only this, but all the fish trophies use a combined system where you need to both reach a milestone and complete the accommodations for catching them. And I love being rewarded for completing all my Hunter's Call accommodations, so I can't wait to earn these. Also, shout out to whoever wrote the flavor text for each of these ornaments. I had a blast reading these and I appreciate the effort. Another great part about these milestones is that they are a great way to track your in-game adventures. I can't wait to keep track of how many ships I've sunk with my vessel. At least, that would have been a cool feature. These milestones are great at tracking how many fish you caught or how many krakens you killed. But none of these milestones reward you for sinking other ships. Which also means there are no trinkets for PvP. And this sucks. A lot actually. Since this would have made this progression system so much more interesting. 
Aside from trinkets, we can also buy other new decorations like rugs, curtains and chairs. These seem like minor additions, but combine them all together and the look and feel of your ship dramatically changes. Sadly, these cosmetics consist of a bit too many recolors and I shouldn't complain all that much since they are not on the same level as say a figurehead, but I'm still a little disappointed. For example, all of the rocks have the same design and only differ in color. Why not put a crab symbol for the ocean crawler rock or some feathers for the parrot rock? Something else that's a little disappointing is that these new cosmetics don't include harpoons, the ship's compass or lanterns, which is certainly a missed opportunity. We do get to buy different ship's crests, both at the Emporium and the Shipwright. These don't reflect existing sets, but I'm sure players will be able to choose one that best reflects their intentions. Another addition included with Captain C is that the captain has the option to lock out the crew from changing the ship cosmetics. I often get frustrated when my crew members try to vex me with ugly cosmetics. So needless to say, being in full control makes me very happy. So let's move to the final major addition of Captain C, the captain's log. This little notebook will have a permanent place on your captain's table and records your adventures on the sea. Whenever you sink another captain's ship, you can sell their stolen log to the reapers. I also like the design and drawings inside the log, but I'm again a little disappointed this logbook doesn't track any PvP progression. Also worthy to note is that you can unlock new variations for your logbook by completing certain milestones. So let's have a close look at the ship ride. Aside from buying new cosmetics, there's also some other stuff the shipwright can do for you. Like restoring your ship to pristine condition for a small amount of gold. Which will never happen to my ship since I'm simply too Dutch to pay for this service. We can now also buy supplies to directly stock your ship. This is nice, but our crew usually manages just fine. So unless there's a Reaper 5 that needs to be sunk as fast as possible, I probably won't use this function, but I'm happy it's there. The captain can also buy bundles of voyages that can be stored on their ship. These cover all trading companies, but don't really offer any new experiences. But I'm not complaining, since it is nice to have your voyages all stored and bundled on your ship. So let's quickly go over the other new additions. The most obvious one is the inclusion of the sovereigns. These offer an easy way to turn in your loot and I really like this. I have heard complaints that it reduces the time available to ambush people that are selling their loot and you know, this is true. But to me the benefits far outweigh the negatives. Less time selling and more time stealing is always welcome. Also don't forget that you won't lose any money when you sell to them and if you are flying an emissary, they will deliver it to that faction, so you still get that sweet multiplier. This includes gems. So if you are a merchant and deliver mermaid gems to the sovereign, they will deliver them to the merchant alliance. Why the sovereign faction is assigned to package duty, I don't know, but there are already some hints that there's more to this faction than meets the eye. Let's just say, they are probably not just helping us without any reason. Just like with every season, we have new seasonal rewards and a new plunder pass. And just like every season, you are the best person to decide if you like these cosmetics. The Pirate Legend rewards this time consist of Merrick's Cutlass and Merrick's Jacket and these I personally really like. My only point of criticism is that I would have liked more exclusive cosmetics. Speaking about cosmetics, we finally have new emissary rewards. There's also a lot of PvP balancing, mainly focusing on the sloop, but I will save that discussion for a separate video. We can now also zoom in on our maps, which is a very welcome addition, and will make finding treasures on those bigger islands a lot easier. And before I forget, we can also now find and interact with the various tools that are washed up on islands. Another small but welcome addition. So, is this a good update? Well, this is hard to answer since it really depends on how much value you put at owning and decorating your own ship. Me personally, I love naming my ship and decorating it to fit my personal style. 
Sadly, aside from the trinkets, none of these other cosmetics are the ones I want for my ship. I really enjoyed sailing with the various heritage ships like the Royal Sea Squirrel or the Paradise Garden set and as of now they have zero new cosmetics. Rare is pretty slow with completing sets but I do hope new additions will arrive sooner rather than later. I also was very skeptical about the new milestone system but having played with it for a bit I absolutely love it. Always being able to see your progression is great and there's a ton of stuff to unlock and flex about. Longtime players also have another gold sink, so that's also great. But having said that, I'm not a fan of paying to save your ship cosmetics and the fact that there are no milestones or rewards for PvP is a great shame. The biggest downside however might be that this update doesn't change the gameplay all that much. I'm sure we will see new social interactions and the addition of the sovereigns will result in more time actually pirating, but that's about it. But to be honest, I don't really mind. Not every update can cater to all our needs and thanks to adventures we still have plenty of new content to look forward to. And as someone who completed all accommodations, I am looking forward to my new goal of unlocking all these new trinkets and flexing them to every pirate I come across the seas. Make sure you come have a look whenever you see the salty hippo on your server. Just keep in mind that the hippo might not be the most friendly animal around. And just like always, there is more to discuss. But we will save those ramblings for the next podcast episode. For now, this is my opinion. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I always read all of them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.